Um, I want to add my own welcome to you all. Um, we're excited to host you virtually at the University of Waikato. Um, if you were here, um, we'd be showing you um, some of our new projects that we're excited about that help us deliver outcomes for our students in our research. Um, <clears throat> the PAR, which is our new central hub. Um, if you look online, you can see some fantastic pictures. It's been shortlisted uh, in the 2024 World Architecture Festival Awards. So we're pretty excited about that. And on the research side, um, we recently opened the HECO Hub to bring together university research and commercial and industry R&D. Um, so that's that's exciting for us as well. And in the virtual space, you'll see we've recently revamped our web, web page. So check out what we're doing there. Uh, and when the opportunity arises, please do come and visit us. You'd be very welcome. Um, <clears throat> I do want to acknowledge also this virtual meeting. Um, it's a great way to share what we're doing in our respective universities. Um, and we have some very similar challenges, but it also ensures easy access for everyone to participate. Um, and of course, helps with our carbon footprint um, and helps us manage that. Uh, so I do want to acknowledge that. Now, having virtual meetings, though, does not mean that the issues that you're discussing are any less important. Your work is integral to the research success of our institutions, uh, and we're grappling with many issues in common in research that are concerned with how we share the results of our research and articulate the value of the research to funders, um, than, you know, more than the actual research itself. Um, we're hearing plenty of rhetoric about wanting to move our economies from significant reliance on primary industries to a greater proportion of knowledge-driven um, economy. Um, but there's a real struggle, I think, at the political level uh, to, I, to identify the knowledge, what the knowledge economy really is. Um, and that lack of appreciation is perhaps borne out by some uh, conflicting actions um, on, on both sides of the Tasman. On the one hand, uh, governments are talking up the knowledge economy, but on the other hand, reducing the funding for research, research support, and, and a push to downsize the research and tertiary sectors in some cases. So that's a real conflict that I think we need to address. And I think some of the issues you're talking about today will, will do that. Um, you know, I think this mismatch also sees limits put on innovation. You know, as the funders start to point to more preconceived solutions rather than actually articulating the problem and letting the sector innovate uh, in their response and in solutions. Um, so that's yet further evidence that uh, the value of knowledge generation is not fully understood. So we've got a job of work ahead of us. And what does that translate to on the ground? Well, look, we know on both sides of the Tasman, we're both facing um, some changes to our research assessment exercises. They're paused. The word cancelled has been used on both sides of the, of the Tasman, but I don't think that's what they meant. The current exercise might be cancelled, but the assessment exercise will continue in a different form. Um, and so I prefer to think of them as paused while those panels think about how they might um, reinvent um, the approach to uh, get the uh, outcomes they're seeking. So previously, that was uh, an almost exclusive focus on research excellence and research productivity. But now there seems to be a greater pressure on research relevance and generating impact from research. So, um, But we know that the research is impactful and important. So, so maybe this comes down to accessibility of the research, which is one of the things that you're discussing today. Um, so yes, on the one hand, it's about opening up the access, um, but on the other hand, it's about accessibility more broadly. And, and accessibility is not just providing the access, it's about providing the translation um, to that need as well. Um, so that's something I would encourage you to keep in mind in your deliberations over the next few days. An interesting example from my perspective and my time in the Antarctic program comes from the Antarctic community, where the Antarctic Treaty Partners, that's the government uh, effectively for Antarctica, 
um, were looking for greater translation of Antarctic research for policymakers so that they could increase the uptake of research into policy and, and get better outcomes for the Antarctic environment um, and its wildlife. And what they did was they instigated the Antarctic Environments Portal, um, portal and that was for commissioned work. Um, so that they commissioned work to bring together all the relevant research and advice on policy relevant areas for the Antarctic. Um, the take on what was important um, for policy was is still continues to be driven uh, both from the policy side and the research side. So um, it's it's a fairly open thing. But but so there's a wide range of topics that are considered. Um, uh, but of course. Um, the research and policy has been better aligned through that process. So that's quite helpful. And, th and there's always been a, a requirement for Antarctic data to be openly available and shared, um, but that on its own wasn't enough. Um, actually, we needed some interpretation of that data and especially the data sets as they grew um, to help policymakers uh, achieve their goals uh, in terms of policy. So. Um, I think that's a pretty good example. Um, and when we talk about data, of course, what I was talking about there was with traditionally um, scaled projects, that of course, the, the amount or volume of data um, that is being collected is growing exponentially. Um, and so I think that's where maybe AI will come in and help us manage um, some of those greater data sets. And I know that you're talking that about that as well. And that came up last week when I was at a meeting of DVCRs at Springer Nature in Melbourne, um, and we were discussing the metrics that might be used to assess our research and demonstrate research ach achievement. Um, and there was a common interest across the Tasman in how we might do that effectively. Um, but actually, the, the size scale difference, again, regional differences come in. Um, demographic differences come into this, and it's not one size fits all. So maybe again, AI might be a tool that we can use to help um, with that. Um, but of course, we have to learn to utilize AI and to trust it and be able to trust it because we actually understand it and use it. So um, that that's an interesting question in front of us as well. So with that said, I think, you know, it strikes me that a lot of what we do need to do to navigate those current challenges in the research space are very reliant on research support and the topics of your meeting are more relevant than ever. Um, research data, uh, research data management, research impact and metrics, accessibility of research and artificial intelligence. So it's all right there in the middle of what we need. So I wish you well over the next several days, encourage the sharing of approaches in our different institutions. Your work is indeed more than more important than ever. And I, for one, am excited to see the progress you will make. So with that, kāpe diem, kia tua, kia maia, a waranta te pilti. Good luck and go well. Kia ora.